This is my 1967 Volkswagen Squareback. I found it in this VW graveyard in Southern California. This is what the engine looked like. I pulled it out and went straight to work taking it apart and cleaning it up. After I got the parts back from the machine shop, I started rebuilding it in my living room. I took my time and I'm pretty happy with my work. I liked the engine in my living room but knew I'd have to eventually get it on a run stand in the carport. I took an old transmission and cut the aft part of the housing off so I could mount the starter properly and secure the engine to the stand. It works good except the engine can rotate on the stand about 5 degrees so I have a board on one side to keep the engine level. That's my neighbor's Dotsons barking in the background. Booby, Porsche, Daisy and Peanut. It's good to finally have the engine on the run stand but there's still a ton of work to do on the car. Fortunately, besides my neighbor's Dotsons, I've got other animals to keep me company and make working in the carport more interesting. This hummingbird is new to the neighborhood and is still a little skittish. A couple others don't seem to mind me at all and even feed when the engine is running or I'm using a pressure washer. I'm doing this rebuild as much on the cheap as I can, so I rebuilt the original Solex carburetors instead of just buying new ones. The automatic choke doesn't work on one and I've yet to determine if the fuel cutoff valves work at all. You can see the board I've added to the stand to keep the engine level. The muffler and rear heat exchangers came out of a car literally buried under a tree. It took a little elbow grease and welding, but for what I didn't have to pay, it cleaned up pretty nicely. As far as the rest of the engine goes, the crankshaft was good and just needed to be polished. The case isn't from a 67, but a 71, and it only needed to be line bored. The connecting rods were good and rebushed. The camshaft was good as well. The pistons, cylinders, and heads weren't salvageable and had to be replaced. When the rest of the car is done, the engine will look pretty good inside of it. I only hope it runs nicely as well. The run stand is pretty simple. The battery is grounded to the engine. I've got a switch to power the coil, automatic chokes and fuel cutoff valves. The oil pressure switch gets power too so I can keep an eye on it. A momentary switch can then power the starter. First rule of troubleshooting an engine though, make sure you've got gas, idiot. The hummingbird is back. I'll have to add some nectar to the feeder though. This guy looks like he'll get his head stuck in the flower if I don't. It took some thinking and some help from an engine smart friend the first night I cranked the engine. I had the fuel pump hoses backwards at first. Also had to find top dead center for the number one piston in order to get the plug wires on correctly. And after pounding my head against the wall for a bit, I realized I had the fuel filter on backwards as well. The only real setback is a little oil leak around the oil pump. I stripped everything off the front of the engine and replaced the gasket on the oil pump plate, but it still leaks. I'll pull the pump, see if I just need a new one and go from there. Maybe it will just be the gasket between the pump body and the case. I really hope it's not the seam in the case. I haven't balanced the carburetors yet. Obviously need to correct the timing, but it sounds pretty good on the run stand at this point. Well, I've got the transmission ready to go back in the car and the brakes have all been rebuilt. Still need a couple small things for the engine and it will be ready as well. 
At this point, the car itself is what needs the most work. Lots of sanding, priming, and painting, plus fresh window seals and vinyl, and she'll be good as new, or at least close enough. Stay tuned.